ABC Sports presents scores and highlights of today's top games and more on College Football Today. State football team comes in having uh, success over the first nine weeks of the season. This is their tenth game. They're ranked third in the nation and they have a realistic chance to play somebody somewhere for the national championship in bowl day. Because of the long-running success of the Penn State football program, the Lions have become a target team. That is, every opponent gears up for them because to beat them means something special. Notre Dame used to be that kind of a team and will be again soon, I think, under Lou Holtz. Today, I think this ball game is going to be decided within a yard of the ball, down where the big fellows work in the trenches. And the matchups along the line of scrimmage are certainly interesting. Yesterday, I talked to Notre Dame coach Lou Holtz about that. Penn State is so strong on the defensive line. I don't know if we can match up our offensive line against their defensive line. I think our defense matches up very well with their offense. The thing that concerns me are two factors when they have the ball. One is their ability to execute the screen and get in an open field and make something big happen. The other one is that when we play the screen, we don't get the pressure on him. He has time and they throw deep. The Dittany Lions came into the South Bend area late yesterday and now they're ready to come out of the tunnel and enter the old stadium. 9-0, ranked third in the nation. Coach Joe Paterno has never coached a losing season. And a win today will be number 197 for him. There is, however, some disquieting news from the ranks of the Penn State playing personnel. Let's go to Tim Brandt now and talk about that news. Keith, it was one of the best kept secrets in the country this week. DJ Dozier, Penn State's All-American tailback, the leading rusher, the leading receiver, injured his knee in practice. He did not play the last two games. He did warm up, however, and in the locker room they are reevaluating that knee to see if, in fact, he will start today. The Notre Dame players, they think all the elements for an upset are present. Notre Dame has won three games in a row. Their confidence is soaring. This is the last home game of the year for the Irish. Lou Holtz knows that if he wins, his success will be headlines across the country. Recruiting will become easier. A winning record will be within reach. And a bowl appearance then becomes a very real possibility. And Lou Holtz thinks he knows how to beat Penn State. I think if there's going to be one thing that's going to be a key in this football game, it's for our football players to play our own game. And Penn State doesn't need any help. We don't want to give them any help. But if we'll just forget who we're playing, if we'll forget about last year's football game, if we'll forget about mistakes we've made, if we'll go out there and approach it the same way we have the last three or four weeks, then this ball game's going to come down to the last couple minutes. The crowd is on its feet. Notre Dame comes into the stadium. Four and four record. After a one and four start, rolled off three straight wins and know well that this game could be a season maker. Everybody talks about Tim Brown. His talents have been well documented, and yes, sir, he will be important in this ball game today for the Irish. But I think the key to the Irish success or failure is the quarterback, Steve Berline. Steve Berline has not thrown an interception in three ball games, and the Irish have won all three. As Berline goes, so goes Notre Dame. It's going to be up to me to not make any dumb decisions to go out there and use my head and take what the defense gives me. Don't force the football and just give Coach Holtz a chance to call the next play. 
um, whether it be a punt or whatever. The turnover is what Penn State lives on. The turnover and lost yardage plays, and it's up to me to put us in a situation where that doesn't happen. Notre Dame cannot afford to turn the ball over one time today. Now, we've talked about the intangibles for Notre Dame. To win, they have to play with a great deal of emotion, play mistake-free football, play over their heads. That's not the case with Penn State. Penn State merely has to play within itself, play up to its abilities. This is a very strong, powerful football team. Case in point, 47 lettermen back from a team that went unbeaten in the regular season last year and competed for the national championship. They've been in tight fit situations before. There are 15 fifth-year seniors, and Joe Paterno knows how to pace them. We only went in pads one day this week. Uh, I, I wouldn't do that with a young team, I don't think, in a big game like this. I wouldn't have the kind of confidence that they could understand that they didn't need to practice uh, that hard in one particular day. These guys have been in so many tough games. They, they, they know what it's all about. Uh, and we're not going to make them any better by, by knocking their brains out for two hours on a Tuesday. So we took the pads off them. I think that's the kind of difference that you have in, a, in, in, in when you have the luxury of having this many seniors. Now for an update, let's join Al Troutwig as you see the series record reflected there. Al? Well, Keith, I'm getting a few last looks at D.J. Dozier, the player in question that Tim Brandt mentioned a few minutes ago. Now, the real reason, perhaps, this week that Penn State has some uh, knocked-up players and D.J. is that uh, Joe Paterno has said this is a very tired football team. But back to D.J. Dozier. He spoke to me a few minutes ago, said he prayed last night, woke up this morning, and feels his knee is 95 to 98 percent, and he's going to go. As far as the field, he'll be running on. It looks firm. It looks solid. It was covered up till yesterday. There is no snow. There is no ice. So we're set now on the sidelines, and we'll be keeping an eye on DJ, Penn State, and Notre Dame. CFA College Football. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by the Heartbeat of America. Today's Chevrolet. By Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. By AT&T. AT&T is the right choice. And by Howard Johnson Hotels and Lodges. company, but we'll give you a chance to work where there's always a challenge. We'll give you opportunities to learn, to develop, to perfect skills that you thought were beyond your reach. We'll help you build a career, a career that can reward you for the rest of your life. We're not a company, we're your country. We're the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Lafitte, Louisiana, and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Lafitte means flat bottom boat racing. An Cajun feast that'll set your mouth on fire. And Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp, Old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden, Old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place. An Old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee light. It doesn't get any better than this. Cool gray day in South Bend, Indiana. Notre Dame won the toss. They elected to defer and take the second half kickoff. So Penn State will have the first possession of the ball game with Jim Coates and Blair Thomas deep for John Carney's kickoff. The Irish wearing the dark blue, navy blue shirts at home. Their final home game of the 1986 season. to Blair Thomas around the goal line and Thomas finds a crack gets out across the 25 to the 27 yard line and the fighting Irish will open in the backfield defensively as they look at this alignment from Penn State and DJ Dozier is out there Dozier is out there so he's going to start with that sore knee. He started slowly in the pregame warm-ups, but as the adrenaline took over, body heat, he felt he could go play, but he is not the deep man. He moves up into a flanker spot on the first offensive set. Steve Smith, the fullback, carries the ball. A big man across the 30 to the 32. Smith, 230 pounds, and brought down by Wally Klein. The offensive
in front, Clayton 265, Wisniewski 245, Radisic 260, Morgan 270, Conlon 280, and Brian Cyberling 6'7", 255. The defensive secondary, I think, for the Fighting Irish will be fun to watch. So when you get your wide picture, kind of keep an eye on what they're doing back there in this first offensive possession. They might tip you off as to what Notre Dame plans to do. Right now, the Irish show them a six-man front. And the ball goes to Dozier, and Dozier is cut down. Slicing in is Ron Weissenhofer making the tackle from his inside linebacker position. Now there's the defensive alignment for Notre Dame. You see the basic set there shows you a four-man front. Sometimes you'll see three today, and sometimes you may see eight. And the guy in the middle among those linebackers for the Irish is steady Mike Kovalevsky, a senior out of Newcastle, Indiana. Inside backers probably are going to have a busy day. Here's Schaefer, back to throw for Penn State. Swings it out for Dozier, bobbles the ball, and Kitt reel it in, and it is incomplete. Ball is hard and slick on a cold day like this. D.J. Dozier, the leading receiver, as well as the leading runner on this ball club for Penn State, was open in the flat. I don't know if this is a lack of concentration because of the injury or not, but he took his eye off the ball and just couldn't get it back. He was wide open. It should have been a Penn State first down. Instead, the Nittany Lions now have to punt it away. John Bruno is in the punt, averaging just under 42 per punt. Gets some pressure, but gets it away, and not a particularly good kick. Fielded by Troy Wilson, and Wilson trying to split the coverage by Penn State. Does get it back about six yards on a 35-yard punt. And the Irish now putting some pressure on the punter. Good outside pressure, too. They weren't blocked well. Instead, they were blocked toward the punter, and they almost got it. Case in point now, in five of the first six games this year, Penn State scored on its first position. In the last three weeks, the Lions have missed quite a few scoring opportunities, have not been able to mount any offense early. Consequently, they have not played well. Good field position for the opening snap from the 38-yard line. Burline, the quarterback, Anthony Johnson is your tailback out of the eye, and Tom Monahan, a senior, opens at fullback for Notre Dame. And it goes to the freshman from South Bend, Anthony Johnson. Big, strong player, and he slashes in there for five yards. There's your offensive set for the Irish. Johnson getting the call. Brown, of course, is a man of many talents. You, he likes the flanker spot more than any other because that gives him more things to do. But he can play up to four different positions for you. Number 81. Milt Jackson is the split in. He goes wide with Tim Brown as Brown goes into his flanker position. And here's Burlein on a rollout. Gets the ball away to Brown, pulls it in, and it's a first down for Notre Dame at the Penn State 46. I thought it was interesting yesterday. We were talking about the cold weather, how hard the football will be. He said, not if you wear gloves. Gloves are the key for me. Boy, this is a player right here. He not only plays with his feet, but he plays with his eyes. He's got a good sense for the zone defense that time. He got in the hook area, waited, caught the football, and turned it up first down, Notre Dame. The Penn State 46. The Lions now show a five-man front and anticipating number 67 nose tackle Mike Russo is caught in coaching. Let's join Al Trotwick. Keith, you know, Lou Holtz is one of the most popular men on the lecture circuit tour. What does a man like that say to his team before a game like this? Well, matter-of-factly, Lou Holtz, I'm told, told his team that this is a day when some very important bowl decisions will be made. So they're thinking about that. He also said that if it weren't for a few bad breaks, this would be a top-ten game all the way, but of course it's not. He told his team that this is their house and that from now on and for the rest of this season, no team will leave here with heads high. And this being their last home game, he meant Penn State. Back to you. And it's first down and five after the encroachment call against Penn State or offsides. Ball is handed inside, carrying his Monaghan, the senior from Arcola, Illinois. And he's got another Irish first down as he reaches the Penn State 35. The Irish up front, Reader 245, Freeman 265, Lanza 255, Heffern 265, Sproul 265, and Joel Williams 6'4 and 235 at tight end. Well, they followed Sproul and Heffern right up that right side that time, too, and the Notre Dame offensive line just fired off the line of scrimmage and that time controlled it. Mark Green is now in at the tailback position for the Irish, replacing Johnson, and Berline drops on first down to pass, getting some pressure, and gets it away down the sideline. The pass is incomplete. And Berline goes flying into the crowd, but he comes out of it all right, getting pressure from Tim Johnson and Bob White. Berline has stopped trying to make the big play, trying to force things. Look at this. Tim Brown 
Brown is wide open. He got by the first level. It's a three-tier passing game, and once he came by the first level, the first defensive player on that side, he was open for a good five seconds before the safety could come over and cover the deep outside third. Burline just couldn't get the ball to it. Marcus Henderson is not the man Penn State wants covering Tim Brown, but the hero back had to come over and pick him up that time. Brown is out right now, and Reggie Ward is in. Ward is number 83. It is second down and 10, and they're still throwing. Burline's pass thrown underneath. The pass is completed to Mark Green out of the backfield, and Green's got a first down as he gets to the Penn State 24. Mark Green originally was intended as a wide receiver here at Notre Dame, so he's very good in that short zone. Well, I'll tell you something about Mark Green, too. As you watch Burline drop, he looks to the right side. Now he looks back off the first receiver and sees Green coming across the middle. But Green does something very important here. He stops, and instead of continuing the way his momentum was carrying him, he went back the other way and fought his way across the 25 to the 24 for the first down. And Tim Brown comes back in as the Irish go double wide, top of the picture. Go back to the ground here. Give the ball to Green. Green is hit at the line of scrimmage, but he'll carry it down to about the 21. Eddie Johnson brought him down. Johnson and White, the two tackles for Penn State, very important, I think, that they are able today to get some defensive pressure. They played a magnificent ball game at Alabama, and particular, I think, in that game was Tim Johnson. He was rested last week, sore leg, and he's sound today. Keith, last week it was Bob White who played a magnificent football game against Maryland. He was in Dan Heading's face the entire afternoon. Second down, seven. protection. Nobody to throw to. Ball squirts loose. Penn State covers it. Penn State's Pete Kiptopoulos is on the loose football as Berline was late making his move away from the pressure of White and Don Graham. And somebody nipped it just enough. He had it in one hand and on a cold day, it's hard to hold on to it with one hand. But it's a scoring opportunity squandered by Notre Dame. We talked about turnovers. They can't afford any. He looks down the middle. Now, he didn't try to force it. Had a receiver and should have gone, but the ball pops loose there. You can see him stripped of the ball. Now it's loose, and Penn State gets it back. So the turnovers that we talked about prior to the game have come into play early for Notre Dame. And hit Burline. White was underneath, and Bob knocked that thing loose, and so Penn State gets the turnover first down at their own 22, and they come out with D.J. Dozier, Steve Smith, lined up behind John Schaefer. Eric Hamilton is your flanker, and he goes in motion. And they give it to Dozier, and he tries to bounce outside, and he got tangled up. The man that made that play was Dave Butler, number 37. He locked on to the fullback as Smith was trying to root him out of there, and he wouldn't move on it, and so Dozier never got any momentum. D.J. Dozier coming off a season-high day of 111 yards last week against Maryland, has that injured knee in the left knee. You can see the left knee gets tangled there on his own blocker. He can't get over the top, and he stumbles. Keeping his hands warm. Schaefer looking to throw down the sideline. Fly pattern passes. Caught. No. Yes. Yes, it is good. Roundtree makes a great catch. The Notre Dame man, Marv Spence, covered him just about as well as you could cover him, but he just simply outfought him for the ball. He also outsprinted him. This is nothing fancy. It's a fly pattern. He's just going straight down. You see Spence has inside position now. Actually, a little push coming from the backside by Roundtree, but Roundtree makes the catch. It's up to the 45, first time in Notre Dame territory this afternoon on the fly pattern. the Irish defense. Four, five, six people up there. Inside goes to Smith. And Smith will have a couple of yards on the offensive line surge as Robert Banks, number 57, stacks the play for the Irish. Boy, Banks, the down defensive tackle, used to be an outside linebacker, went to a down position this year for Lou Holtz because they didn't have enough linemen. That time he penetrated nicely, just followed the football right down the line of scrimmage and made the tackle. These two fullbacks for Penn State, they don't get a lot of publicity, but I tell you, there are two people that can move it around, Smith and Manoa. And Schaefer back to throw on second and eight, goes down the middle to his tight end, Cyberling, who's been catching a lot of balls in the last couple of games. And Cyberling holds that one in at 35, and he's just short of a first down. Keith Bryan Cyberling is 6'7", 253 pounds. He's a senior, and he's become a major part of the Penn State 
State offense, not only as a blocker, but with the football. He now has 18, 19 catches on the season, second best on the club. He's had nine catches in the last two games. Roscoe is in there at tight end right now, so they go to a double tight end alignment on third and about a yard. And give the ball to Dozier, and Dozier will have the first down, and he made the cut that time on the sore knee. So he turned it back inside with power, and it looks like he's right. He's all right. D.J. Dozier, four-year starter at Penn State. That's rare. He's headed toward his fourth straight season of leading Penn State in rushing. That's a first at Happy Valley. There's the cut Keith talked about. Inside, the outside defensive halfback and picks up another four yards after the initial hit. And his first down Penn State at the Irish 31. Schaefer to Dozier, sweep it left. Big hunt. Not a big hole, but enough for a man of the talent of Dozier, and he turns that one into about an eight-yard pickup before Steve Lawrence can get him. See, Lawrence also in on the play. Dozier's hurt. Dozier is the player shaking out for Penn State. So to hold your breath here. Well, he got to the outside. Containment broke down for... Notre Dame, and watch the block he picks up outside by Eric Hamilton, number 30. See it right there? And then he cuts back inside. A little stutter step there on the knee, and then he goes down, and he hasn't gotten back up yet. It does not appear, though, that they are they are not working with a the knee. They've got the smelling salts out there. He might have just come down on top of the ball, under the pile, and had the wind knocked out of him. There he goes down. It was helmet to helmet, Keith. Steve Lawrence, 23, put his helmet right on top of Dozier's hat. Is this Howard Johnson? Yes, sir. There's been a lot of changes. You might say we're turning the place upside down. You know, a lot is changing at Howard Johnson. New rooms, new furnishings, and new attention to service. It's different. I like it. One second. I'm just straightening up. No matter how you look at it, this is Howard Johnson. We're turning Howard Johnson upside down. You can't win if you don't take the risk. Who will win TV's ultimate challenge on Jeopardy's $100,000 Tournament of Champions? The excitement builds as the Jeopardy Tournament of Champions continues all next week at 7, only on Channel 6. Push your old antifreeze another year, and you might end up pushing your luck. Weak, neglected antifreeze can cause freeze-up and make a radiator look this bad, while the Presto radiator looks this good. So don't push your luck, change it. Once a year with fresh Presto. The San Francisco 49ers. Joe Montana's return has sparked their playoff drive. The Washington Redskins. They're fighting for the top of their division. They meet Monday night. Big Ten story. Ohio State the winner for the ninth game in a row, 30-17 over Wisconsin. Michigan in trouble. Four minutes to go in Ann Arbor. Minnesota leading 17-10, trying to win the game for the Little Brown Jug. First time since 1962. Keith? Little brown jug will get filled if Minnesota pulls off that one. <laughs> 7.51 to go in the first quarter. No score. Notre Dame turned it over in scoring territory. David Clark is now in at the halfback position for Penn State, replacing Dozier, who had left the game after being shaken up. On second down and three, it is Clark carrying the ball. A workman like it's Smith carrying the ball. Clark is 210 pounds. So he's uh, about the same size as Dozier, lacking a little bit in foot speed. But this time they go to their fullback, and the fullback gets the first down, Steve Smith. Smith has fine speed, excellent strength. He's a very versatile fullback. He's called on to make key blocks, key runs, make catches out of the backfield. He's been in all everything for Penn Dozier State as Dozier comes back. Dozier back in at the tailback position now on first down for Penn State. Just inside the Irish 20, and Dozier takes it to the right side, breaks it. Powers to the five, and that'll be a first down for Penn State. They're going to mark him just short of the five, but it's first and goal for the Lions. Watch the ferocity now of uh, Penn State as they get down close here because this is something the Nittany Lions have not done in the last couple of weeks. They have not been able to score inside the 25-yard line. So Penn State and Paterno have worked overtime in trying to get these guys mentally geared, trying to get them to fire off the ball and have a little extra effort down deep in the opponent's territory. They got four cracks at it from the six. It goes to Smith. 
Steve gets half of it. To the three. Cedric Figaro and Mike Kobolewski, linebackers, bring it down for Notre Dame. Here's your difference. The Irish were moving the ball in the opening possession for them, down where they could think scoring of some kind, field goal or touchdown. Turn it over. Penn State takes the ball, and here they come. Plunkety plunk, bang bang, right down the field. Typical Penn State formula. One of the best in the country at taking the ball away. They're plus 16 in the takeaway giveaway category. Power line is now as Manoa checks into the backfield at fullback. Smith stays in for blocking. Give it a Dozier and DJ gets to about the two, and there he stops. Mike Griffin, the nose tackle, and Kovalevsky, the linebacker, numbers 94 and 49, did the job for the Irish. Boy, don't forget about 48 either. Cedric Figaro, he was there in a hurry like a shot and put his hat right on him. It's that old tackle, tuck the tail, sky the eyes, use the legs for power, and once you make contact, don't let him have another inch. Third and goal, just inside the two. cranking amps. If you think your battery's fading fast, I'd start thinking Delco. Now through January 3rd, get a $5 rebate on most Delco batteries. See a participating AC Delco retailer for details. Never wait for trouble. Listen to the heartbeat of America. It's the rhythm of the road. It's the pulse on the street. Pulse on the street. City and town of magic sound. Put yourself in today's Chevy S10 Blazer and listen to your heartbeat. It's America's favorite sport utility vehicle. Ooh, the heartbeat of America. Chevrolet. Chevrolet. The 
61 points scored last week against SMU was the most points scored in a game by the Fighting Irish since their national championship season of 1977. With 2.26 to go in Ann Arbor at the end of a 75-yard drive, Gerald White's touchdown run has tied the football game as Bo Schembechler elected to kick for the tie rather than to go for two. Michigan and Minnesota tied up at 17 apiece. And, of course, I was wrong, Keith. Minnesota won that game up in Minneapolis in 77. Back to you. Still, they haven't won it too many times, Jimmy, and I would be a huge win for them. But again, I think to go 75 yards, there's our senior leadership under Harbaugh showing up again. The That's the kind of leadership this Penn State football Minnesota, team has, too. 17. But I would suggest to you right now that this next possession is terribly important for Notre Dame. The element of confidence is built right into this one. Literally, uh, could be a 14-point swing off that turnover as uh, the Irish That's returned right away, and Penn State took it right down the field from the 22-yard line. Tim Brown, number 81, is the deep man for Massimo Monka's kickoff. Nailed it. Not much wind today. Another up the bus over. It takes it at the three-yard line. Pops it up the middle. Penalty flag. Penalty flag back where the last block was thrown. I think they're going to lose this one. It's 97 yards by Tim Brown, but I think you've got a foul back up around the 21-yard line. Could be against Penn State, but let's wait and see. Flipping Notre Dame. Well, Timmy Brown has done his part. the wall now. Watch Timmy Brown coming for the right of your screen. will just explode. Oh, I tell you, I don't see it. I don't see it at all. I saw Tom Galloway, 54. Watch 54 in the dark blue now. Oh, there it is. There it it's is, a right push. Yep. push. It's a half-hearted push, though. But it's a push in the back. Well, Kurt Bernier is 41 yeah, for Penn State, and he just got shoved from behind. Left of your screen, C41, half-hearted push. I think he was just lunging to try to make the tackle. I don't think the push made him go down. Oh, my, that's a break for Penn State. So it's a 90-yard penalty, and it cost him seven points, a second major mistake of the ball game. The Irish go from the 11 first down. Here comes the ball. Now, the ball was going to be a little bit high. But here comes Cotton. Now, watch the, the contact before the ball gets there. Boom, right here. See, now the ball comes by. There was no question about that. The referee is James Garvey. Cobbs, of course, very quick defensive secondary man, leads the team in interceptions with four. 15-yard pass interference against the defense, and an automatic first down. The first mistake of the day by Penn State. Moves the football to the 28-yard line of Notre Dame. First down for the Irish as Mark Green and Tom Monahan are in the backfield now. Pressure throws for Brown and it is incomplete. He might have chosen the wrong man. Milt Jackson might have been the better choice because Jackson was on a fly down the sidelines. Well, he threw into 
coverage. It was his own coverage. They got back there, but he, he went to where all the pressure was. He rolled to that side. Obviously, the coverage is going to roll to that side with him in his zone, and that's where the hero back was. Marcus Henderson, number three, to double cover in the area, and he tried to force it in there to Tim Brown. Braxton Banks makes his first appearance in the ball game. The freshman fullback from Hayward, California. Mark Green comes out to a wide receiver spot, leaving Banks the lone back. On second down and ten. Give it to Banks. Banks out to the 33. That's a pickup of five. Let's pause five seconds now so our stations can tell you who they are along the way. WPVI-TV Philadelphia, serving New Jersey and Delaware. Notre Dame, in their first possession today, driving, got down to the 22-yard line, fumbled the ball away, Penn State took it and drove it right down the field to lead 7-0. Notre Dame had a 97-yard kick return for a touchdown by Timmy Brown, wiped out because of a clipping penalty. Right now, the Irish are looking at third down and five from their 33. Receiver got hung up a little bit. Now the tight end is available. Throw to it. No, it is Brown. Jim Brown coming across. Brown got hung up over there in coverage, but he pulls in the, the pass, and it is complete for a first down as Minnesota upsets number two, Michigan at Ann Arbor. And that upset, Keith, that upset right there on your screen almost upset that play for Notre Dame because it was announced here in the stadium that Minnesota had beaten Michigan. The crowd exploded and almost forced uh, Notre Dame all size. They couldn't hear the cadence. We'll detail uh, the upset for you in just a moment. First down for the Irish at their 43-yard line. Green and Banks in the backfield. Penn State showing the six-man front. Give the ball to Mark Green out to the 46. And now let's go to Jim Lampley. All right, Keith, you gave the score. Perfectly executed game-closing drive by the Gophers. Ricky Foggy led them down the field. With three seconds on the clock, they lined up, and as time expired, Chip Lowmiller kicked a 30-yard field goal, which has beaten Michigan 20-17. Still, next week's game between Michigan and Ohio State is the battle for the Rose Bowl berth because the head-to-head -head result is the tiebreaker in the Big Ten. Yours, Keith. Second down and seven for the Irish from the 46. Burline gets it off quickly to the sidelines. The pass intended for Reggie Ward, and it was thrown behind him. Well, the loss by Michigan today just eliminated the Rose Bowl from any hopes of having a national championship game. Keith Burline rushed that pass, and Lou Holtz almost came off the sideline, and he went out and with his hands motion, slow down, take your time. There was no need to rush that pass. It's a three-step drop, just turn and throw it. The man was in the flat, he was open. Lou Holtz just wants Burline to relax a little bit. Right now, Steve is looking at third and long, third and seven. Good protection. Down the middle, past the Brown. Brown's going to have the first down at the Penn State 45-yard line. He caught that ball in front of Don Graham. Boy, Burline, the two most improved areas are reading defenses and finding the second and third receiver. He looked off two receivers, followed Brown back into the middle, and you can see him clear the zone here and come open just for that split second before the linebacker can come back from his hook area and make the tackle. Did you see it that time, Don Graham, 53? He had already gone back to the hook zone, then had to readjust and come up and make the tackle. He also got a liberal mark on it, too. First down at the 45. Give it to Braxton Banks, and Banks is hit by Mike Russo. And the 260-pound nose tackle brings him down. They'll give him one yard to the 44. They've had some great nose tackles over the years at Penn State. One of my favorite, I guess, going back through the years would be Pete Kugler. He could stack them up. I don't have a whole lot of favorites up there. I was pounded by a lot of them at Penn State. <laughs> hey, I tell you, we talked about all the experience on the Penn State team. Lou Holtz has nine freshmen playing on the first and second teams. Second down and nine. Burline rolls away. Now he's got some time. Throws back the other way to Mark Green, and Green will go to the 40, and that's all. And that's a sure tackle by Gary Wilkerson, a sophomore from Sutherland, Virginia, for the Lions. Boy, that was an outstanding play by Burline that time. He now ranks at the top of virtually every Notre Dame passing record. You could see that time he got into a little bit of trouble. He got those big.
Big size 14, so out of the way in a hurry. Readjusted, started to go back to the right after avoiding two tacklers, and finally threw back and made the completion. Nice now adjustment. Looking at third down and five. <laughs> Three wide people. Lions are coming. Passes away. Brown's got it. First down to the 30. Marcus Henderson and Duffy Cobbs on the tackle for Penn State. You don't think that Brown isn't a gifted athlete? Well, I want to tell you, that ball was drilled, too. Now, watch the white shirts now, Penn State. See, the linebackers are coming. Ordinarily, you'd be in a man defense if there's a blitz on. Instead, they stayed with the zone, and Penn State just picked up the blitz and threw a quick pass out to the flats to Tim Brown. Nice adjustment by Notre Dame. Irish first down at the Nittany Lions 30. Anthony Johnson's in the backfield. Give it up front to Banks, the fullback. And Banks will have four yards on the carry. Banks is one of those freshmen we were talking about. He was one of the top 100 athletes recruited nationally last year, obviously a high school All-American. He's a tough kid who also plays linebacker or played linebacker in high school. He rushed for 391 yards in one game last season, so he's talented. This could be the last play of the first quarter with Penn State leading 7-0. is out. Ward is in. Bill Jackson comes wide with Ward to the bottom of the picture. This is Johnson. Gets around the corner. Got a heck of a block from Jackson. Turned the corner and he got it just over the 20 and it looks like another first down for the Irish as the first quarter ends. Penn State leading it 7-0. to the heartbeat Minnesota 20 to 17. Michigan was ranked second last week. Penn State this week third. Miami will stay number one almost surely. And Penn State with an opportunity to move back up into the number two position. Doesn't matter a whole lot to Joe Paterno right now where the rankings are. He wants to win the football game and his team's getting some pressure. Tim Brown is back in for the Irish. And you got movement along the front by Notre Dame. They lost concentration and it's going to cost them five yards. Once again, now, Penn State hurts itself with a penalty. Uh, two things for Notre Dame hurts itself. 
yourself with a penalty. Two things I want you to look at here. Number one is the turnover. The turnover was the fumble after Notre Dame had driven down the field against Penn State and was in scoring position. Number two, the penalties. Penn State has two penalties. Notre Dame has two penalties, but Notre Dame's was costly. It was on a 97-yard kickoff return by Tim Brown. They had to pull it back. All comes back to the 24. First down and 15, Burline. Throws one to the sidelines, and the pass is caught by Mark Green, swinging out of the backfield, and he gets it back to near the 20-yard line. So it'll be second down and about 11. Just starting the second quarter of play. Snowed on Thursday, we had about three or four inches, but the field is in outstanding condition. It was down there just prior to the game, and it's solid, it's holding, it's not wet at all. They had a tarp on it, got all the snow off. Second down. A little more than 11. Play action to Johnson. Burlides passes away. Passes complete to Johnson coming out of the backfield, and Anthony is dropped just short of the 15-yard line. So it'll be third down for the Irish and about six yards. Play coming in from the sideline. Johnson is out. Green is in for the Irish. Burline has now hit five straight passes. Nose of the ball is just short of the 15. They've got to go close to the nine, just short of the nine. So they need six yards on third down. Some blocking out there for Banks. Banks has got the first down inside the 10 at about the 7. Boy, this play is set up so well. Shane Conlon, the outside linebacker, was coming from the left side. Caroline just sat in there, looked to the right, and finally pump fake to set up the screen on the left side. Then he gets it out to Brankston Banks. This is just a freshman, Banks. He's playing like a senior. He'll be 19 years old next week. He's young. He's just learning. But his dad played college ball. He's hard-nosed. He gives it every little bit of power he's got in his body. Cornell Taylor is back in now at fullback. We're in for the first time today at fullback. They give the ball to Green Green over the left side and gets to the four. to the four and it's second down and goal for the Irish. Ran the triple option that time. It looked like he was going to fake and run it around the corner. You know the first time Burline successfully executed the option last spring, Lou Holtz collapsed in mock disbelief. That's not easy to get those big feet around the corner, he said. Well, it's not a, a, a total wishbone set. It's a power eye set they're working out of as Burline turns and hands the ball to Anthony Johnson. And Johnson is hit right above the line of scrimmage. And it'll be third down and goal. I don't believe you're going to power it up the middle against Penn State down in this neighborhood. No, but the concept is sound. They're powering it right now. They've got the option set. Whether it's a wishbone or a power eye formation, it doesn't make any difference. They still have the availability of the triple option. And as long as they run that up the middle once or twice, you can set up the corner now. They've got the wide side of the field here. They can run that option to get out and option the, the outside linebacker. From the four, third and goal with Mark Green in a tailback, and Tim Brown is back in the backfield as well. Burline to throw it. He's got nobody to throw it to. Now he unloads it at the goal line, and it is out of the hands of Tim Brown. As Brown had the ball slapped away by Marcus Henderson, and John Carney will come on the field with a kicking tee. It was Henderson who made the play on the goal line. I'm not so sure it was Henderson as much as it was Brown. Watch Brown now. The ball hits him high on the on the jersey, right by the shoulder pads, and bounces off. Actually hit him in the hands and bounced off. And he just dropped the football, and out of frustration, he turns now. Henderson did put some pressure on and made the contact from the behind. Carney for the, for the field goal from 20 yards. first half. The Irish get on the board. It is now Penn State leading 7-3. to three. 
Why you bother me, boy? Are you crazy? I'm a chicken hawk and you're a chicken. Are you coming quietly or do I have to mush you up? You're going at it all wrong, son. You gotta go to Kentucky Fried Chicken if you wanna catch America's favorite chicken. It's a great place to get a great meal. No one makes tender, juicy chicken like the Colonel. It's finger licking good. Here, son, let me give you a lift. <laughs> They say it takes a big computer company to build a big computer. Sure. Who else? But Goodyear said, wanna bet? And built a supercomputer for NASA. Goodyear did? Yeah. The aerospace group. Goodyear's computer can add or subtract six and a half billion times a second. It's one of the world's fastest computers. See what you can do when you don't listen to what they say. Goodyear. Put 85 yards for that three points using 18 plays and eight minutes 25 seconds to go 85 yards. Again, in case you missed it, the Michigan Wolverines, number two in last week's polls, upset by Minnesota today at Ann Arbor. 17. Number 49 is Jim Coates, Blair Thomas 32, John Carney who just kicked the field goal. He is the leading field goal career kicker at Notre Dame. He will knock it away. Ball hangs up and Thomas takes it on the 15 yard line. Very fast. Thomas gives Penn State the football first down near their 45. Well, I tell you what, that's some awfully quick feet. He's got 4-3 speed. He commands your attention. You talk about quick. Look at this. Now watch the move he puts on here. Finally gets his feet back under him and turns it to the outside. He is some kind of quick. He can hit the light switch and be in bed before it's dark. David Clark will be the tailback with Tim Manoa in at fullback now, but they come out in a splitback alignment. And Hamilton goes in motion. From the 45, it's Manoa, the fullback, and he is jumped on by number 27, George Streeter, a sophomore out of Chicago, and there's a loss of a yard on the play. San Francisco 49ers and the Washington Redskins. On Monday Night Football here on ABC, Joe Montana back from his back injury and playing for the 49ers and the Redskins, of course, still in the hunt in the Eastern Conference, uh, the Eastern Division of the uh, National Conference. Second down, 11. Schaefer will throw it. Get some pressure. Thrown down. Back of the line of scrimmage. It was almost a face mask grab by Mike Griffin, but Mike turned it loose in time and got his big arm on the quarterback and took him down all the way back at the 35. Boy, that's just individual effort. Watch Griffin now. Just fights his way through the entire time. Fights, 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 pressures his way through, and finally just makes the hit. He gave Radicic everything he could handle that time. It was just one-on-one -on -one and drove him back into the backfield until he was back there with Schaefer. Loss of 10 yards, back to the 35. Third down and 20 for Penn State. Lions are leading the Irish 7-3 to three with 11 minutes to go in the first half. And carrying the ball, David Clark. And Clark is up to the 43 where the marker shows fourth down and the Penn State punting team comes on. Second punt of the game. First kick today was 35 yards. Troy Wilson is the deep man for the Irish. No pressure. Wilson goes to the sidelines and 
guest, uh, Reverend Theodore Hesburgh, who incidentally is, has retired as president of the university, replaced by a man many of you remember. Monk Malloy played basketball here. Monk is now the president of this great old university. Al Trotwig will be talking to both Father Hesburgh and the vice president at halftime. Notre Dame calling a timeout here as Berline did not like the circumstance. Contenders for the SEC championship, Alabama, LSU, and Auburn. Alabama with only Auburn remaining. LSU finishes the conference schedule at Mississippi State tonight. Auburn plays Georgia tonight, and then the Alabama game. Keith? Thank you, Jim. Well, there's the Vice President, George Bush, with Father Hesburg and Reverend Edward Monk Malloy, the incoming president. That change in leadership at the university takes effect at the end of, of the spring term. In effect, here on, it's the wrapping up process for, for the Ted. All right, first down. From the 25. sidelines to get his play and either the plan was to try to entice Penn State to jump or to test their discipline or else he checked off on that long count, gave the ball to Purnell Taylor and Taylor picked up five yards. Keith Notre Dame has to be encouraged, Lou Holtz has to be encouraged by the fact that every time the Irish have had the football they have moved effectively. Anytime you can pick up five yards on a first down play like that you're in good shape. Pete 
Giftopoulos, a 235-pound junior linebacker from Hamilton, Ontario. And Jefferson very quickly is out of there. Just didn't 
get a hold of him. And uh, as a result, the big fullback turns it back in there for almost a five-yard pickup. Next Saturday, CFA football, 3 o'clock Eastern time, and we don't know the game at this point. That decision will be made over the weekend, depending on what happens today. Schaefer back on second down. the ball away though Cedric Figaro was reaching for the man and the ball trying to strip it and Schaefer quickly tucked it away and kept possession so it'll be third down at about two well this is fun both teams are playing very basic football a lot of zone coverages not a lot of complicated man to man defenses or combinations it's just power football up front
AT&T is in success stories for small. Boy, we said at the top of the show, Keith, that it was paramount for Notre Dame not to turn the ball over. And we said the key character in the success or failure of Notre Dame would be Steve Berline. And thus far, he's put the ball on the ground twice.
underneath. It's just as well the ball was overthrown. Shane Conlon was on the inside, and Marcus Henderson, the hero back of the safety, was on the outside, so he threw it away. Five seconds left. I think Notre Dame would be just as happy to get into the locker room, trailing 10-6. Well, of two turnovers, and Penn State cashed them both. Six, as Anthony Johnson carries the ball and the first half is over. So after 30 minutes, Penn State 10, Notre Dame 6. Burline 11 of 18, 109 yards. He's been fairly accurate, but he's put the ball on the ground twice. They squib kick it, try to keep it away from Tim Brown. It's wobbled around on the ground some and finally picked up and fumbled. What a hard hit, but recovering is number... 59, it looked like Greg Hudson, a linebacker covering Corny Southall's fumble. Corny had trouble picking it up, never got it tucked away, and a ball comes flying out of the stack, and it's recovered by the Irish. Well, it looks like it's tucked away here, but you see he's dancing around. He's having a tough time trying to find an opening, and Bernier, Kurt Bernier, an outside linebacker, 41, just put his helmet on the football with a good stiff lick and knocked it loose. So they lose about 10 yards on that ball flying back up the field, and Notre Dame will start just outside their own 17, trailing 10 to 6. It's Anthony Johnson and Tom Monahan lined up behind Steve Berline, the quarterback. And a long count. Pitch it back to Johnson, the tailback. Johnson with a nice cut. Gets it out to the 22-yard line. Defensively, Giptopoulos leading the tacklers for Penn State. Conlon there. Conlon forced one fumble. But Notre Dame, the leading tacklers are Figaro and Kovalevsky. And the team stats at halftime are these. Turnovers, too. Badly, at least uh, they were costly turnovers for Notre Dame. It was Burline that put both of them on the ground and both resulted in uh, scores. Second down and six for the Irish. Stay with the tailback, Johnson, and he'll have the 24. And it'll bring up third down as Bob White and Pete Giftopoulos grabbed him and held him at the 24. There was a lot of movement, a lot of jumping around defensively for both teams in the early going, the early possession. But in, as time wore on in the first half, they just kind of geared it up and squared off with each other and pounded. Last couple of weeks, Keith, it's been interesting to see how Lou Holtz has settled down. Not as many as the He's all back to the bases. Third and a long three. Berline wanting to throw, gets his pass off. He was under pressure from Bob White, number 34. Threw the ball in the general area of Tim Brown, but well off the mark. And Notre Dame now will have to punt for the first time today. It'll be Dan Sorensen in punting. He should hit it around the 15-yard line. Way and Jim Coates are the deep people for Penn State. No pressure, not a long kick, but it's high, and it forces a fair catch call by Coates. Ball comes falling out of the gray sky that looks like it may have some snow in it. 33 yards, but good hang time on it. And Penn State will take the ball, good field position at the 42. Here's Al Troutwick again with Digger Phelps. That's right, Keith. You never know who you'll run into in the press box. Digger, a pretty good win for your team last night on the basketball floor against the team from Yugoslavia. How does your team look for this season? I think we'll be okay. Once we get Rivers back this week, it should be interesting. And I think as the year goes along, we'll get better. We'll miss the big front line players, but I think we got the quickness maybe to press even this year. Okay, let's uh, watch this play, and we'll be back in a moment. It's Manoa carrying the ball for Penn State, and apparently Steve Smith is gone for the day with an ankle sprain. Let's continue with Digger. What kind of aspirations do you have for the upcoming season? How good can your team be? David Rivers, obviously, is a key. He's the quarterback. He's our, uh, so to speak, Jim McMahon. If you've got a great one that can do things in game conditions, Rivers does that. And I think if we can rebound and if we can play some post defense, then I think we're going to be an exciting basketball team. Thanks, Digger. Good luck this season. Keep second down and six. The ball is up near the 47 of Penn State. It goes to D.J. Dozier. And Dozier's second effort will get the ball to midfield, where it'll be third down and short. We'll see the Fighting Irish basketball team at Kansas against the Jayhawks during our coverage of college basketball here on 
ABC starting January 18th. DJ Dozier's had a lot of injuries since his freshman year, mostly with his hamstring, but when he's healthy, he's as good as anybody, anywhere. Right now, he's got a troubled knee, but he's playing well. Third and two for the Nittany Lions from midfield. Manoa going for the first down, and he's close. He's close. Wally Klein stood him up. The big Texan tried to hold him, so let's see where the mark is. I think they've marked him short. Shaper's request, and that's a fine move. You bet. Don't, you need time to think about it. You need time to talk about it. Ask for the change. It's, uh, it's close enough. It's certainly justifiable. I remember a 1967 Gator Bowl game. I think it was 67 when Penn State gambled on a play like this around midfield against Florida State. And a game that they thought they had in hand got away, and it wound up 17-17 tied. Sunset, and that's the first time anybody's seen the sun all day around here. In two days. <laughs> they will punt. Not going to gamble here. Penn State leading 10 to 6. Troy Wilson goes back. And John Bruno's fourth punt of the day. He's yet to hit one 40 yards. Spins this one with a good tight spiral. Wilson, uh, the ball should let it go. And they knock him out short of the 10 yard line. His position on the field. It was tail tracker. It had to go into the end zone. He makes the catch after a 47 yard by the line, gives him a hole, and he's going to pick up six yards on that carry. Keith, again, though, it is a mental error by Notre Dame, which puts it backed up against its own goal line. Cardinal sin. As you look at it, Nebraska 70 points against Kansas, but a Cardinal sin of the kicking game has never fielded a ball inside the 10 yard line. Wilson evidently thought the ball was going out of bounds or he lost his position and he just. Made the catch. Second down and four. We're lying, little pop. Pass is caught by Anthony Johnson and good for a first down up at the 21 yard line. Brought down by Gary Wilkerson. It's a flanker screen, just a three step drop release the ball. Johnson, of course, another one of those runners out of the backfield. He's a freshman from South Bend. Makes a move, tries to get to the outside. What he tried to do is he tried to sucker. Wilkerson up and tried to make him come inside, and then he was going to take him to the outside one-on-one -on -one down the sidelines. It's first down, call it the 22 for Notre Dame. This is Green, and Green gets some daylight around the corner and picks up the first down as he moves it to the 37-yard line. Marcus Henderson finally got him out of bounds. Good individual rushing by this freshman. Here he comes now. Green turns it inside with a good cut. Got an outstanding block there from Spruill and also from Heffern. Turns that thing up, breaks the tackle, and finally the hero backer of the safety, number three, Marcus Henderson, had to knock him out of bounds. You don't see many guys run through the arms of Trey Bauer, but he did just there. And Anthony Johnson checks back in at tailback. Bill Jackson and Tim Brown are wide to the bottom of the picture. Berline is back to throw it. Gets pressure. Gets it away. Down the middle. Jackson wide open. First down Notre Dame at the Penn State 13-yard line. Ray Ison saved the touchdown. That ball was just drilled. Watch what Berline does to avoid the tackle here. Steps back inside the pocket and just drills it. Jackson had already beaten Henderson, the free safety, who didn't drop back, or the strong safety. Ison, the free safety, comes back and takes the deep middle. Watch this, though. The play's made by Burline. Burline steps inside the outside pressure. This is a 49-yard strike to Jackson. Perfectly thrown. And it's first down at the Penn State 13. Out of the wishbone, the arrow. It's Johnson. And that's about all as Ison rode him out. Yeah, see, Ison's a little bit upset. He knows he was beaten on the last play. He's trying to make up for it now. But he comes.
comes up, he supports the run as quickly as any safety I've seen. Ison, 22, watch him come out of the right hand of your screen. Boy, that tell you what, that's good leg leverage. He had all the power and just took Johnson backwards. Loss of a couple of yards on the play. Fifth time that Notre Dame has been inside the Penn State 25. They only have six points. Burlines pass. Throw to the outside. Tim Brown, touchdown. here partially because of Tim Brown and there's nothing fancy about that but they're in a zone coverage C3 Marcus Henderson he's the safety all right now he tries to get to the deep outside Jackson hesitates him just for a minute by taking the inside route and when they crossed Tim Brown came free Kick by Carney is good and for the first time today Notre Dame has gone to the lead all right Burline's watching this now Jackson number six takes an inside route the outside. That made Marcus Henderson, number three, just hesitate for a second. Enough for Brown to blow by him. And Tim Brown took it in. The Joe Paterno, you see, has taken off the coat. He is really starting to prowl the sidelines as Notre Dame goes 92 yards to get the lead in the ball game. And Carney will now kick off to Penn State's Blair Thomas and Jim Coates. See how matter-of-fact Tim Brown was when he got to the end zone. Lou says he doesn't like his players dancing in the end zone. He wants them to act like they've been there before. Boy, this whole stadium's rocking now. Officially 92 yards. The ball was located between the 7 and 8 yard markers. Getting the blocking on the far side of the field gives Penn State good field position for this answering possession all the way out around the 42-yard line. You can tell a quality football team. It faces adversity, and it comes right back. This is Coach 49. Makes an outstanding cut to the outside here, and then picks up some blockers. Just follows his blockers. He's not trying to break it. He's just trying to get as much territory, as much yardage as he possibly can to let the offense take it up past the 40. DJ Dozier is in the backfield with Tim Manoa. 13-10, to 10, the Irish have the lead for the first time in the game. It's Manoa. The big fullback counters the ball to the 49 of Penn State. This is all working on the safeties this time. Just gets the quick out pass to Brown. Brown just gets into the flat. Henderson's not there. Three in time. And Tim Brown takes it in by himself. beating Michigan State 24-21. That ends any chance that Michigan State would go to the Holiday Bowl. And now what Northwestern needs to do is to find a coach who can do the kind of work for them that Dave Cragthorpe has done up in Corvallis, Oregon for Oregon State. Right, Keith? Well, I think Francis paid me a pretty good choice. Well, Francis has done a good job up there, but he's on record. He doesn't particularly want it. Third down and a long four. About four and a half for Penn State. And Schaefer to throw it. Once Seiberling down the middle, can't find him. Throws instead for Roundtree, and there's a flag. Defending was Marv Spence. Interference on Spence. 
great call. And I'll tell you what, too. He was right there almost at the same time as the football was. Awfully close call. It. Here's another angle now. See if Spence is touching the receiver before the ball. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Hit him from the Good back. call. First down from the 45 for Penn State on the Notre Dame side of the field. Schaefer on first down, looking to throw. Goes deep with it for Roundtree. And it is incomplete. This time Spence at the inside position and denied Roundtree. Well, he's pushing and shoving down there, but that's incidental contact. Again, he has good position now. Look at this. This is Marv Spence, 25. He's got the inside, looking back for the football. Now, see the push right there by Roundtree? They want an interference call. But that's incidental contact. That's a good no call. The other one was obvious after seeing the second replay. Oh, First well replay didn't show us too. It was not catchable. It was headed for the drummer. The man. Second down and ten. Manoa. Seven yards on that carry. He must be averaging seven yards the way he's whacking in there. His family lives in Hawaii. His brother Sam plays at Idaho State. He's a hotel management major and a very tough football player. Take over catering. I don't think many people his size would be looking for a guy that size to complain about room service. Blair <laughs> Thomas is the tailback now. Third down, three and a half. This is Thomas. Good pursuit outside. And number 37, Dave Butler is the man. The first contact by Butler and just kept it headed toward the sidelines and the rest of the folks came to help. Boy, West Pritchett was first, Butler was second. They just kept stringing the play out and waiting for pursuit. And they say half the play in defense is wanting to. Right now, Notre Dame is fired up. They've got 11 guys running to the football on every play. John Bruno is in the punt on fourth down and three. Roy Wilson is deep. No pressure. Pooches it. And it hits a Notre Dame man in the back. And it's picked up. And up the sidelines comes the big return by Steve Lawrence. And Lawrence is all the way to the Penn State. 30-yard line and a penalty play. deep it hit Lawrence in the back and let's see about the call it's a clip against Notre Dame they lost a 97 yard touchdown because of a clip but watch this now it's going to hit Lawrence in the back Steve turns around and nobody there he takes off boy that's an alert play he just took it down the sidelines but what's even more impressive is the way he waits for Spence here to throw a block cuts to the inside sees not help there Spence comes back and throws another block before he's taken back see if we can find a clip in there but there you see it hit Spence and he just picks it up and then takes it down the sideline look at 25 there's a clip that's Kovaleski 49 and through the block top of the screen they called that a clip it was from behind outstanding return though by Lawrence nonetheless it's a big play at Notre Dame has the ball in Penn State territory at the 49. 51-yard return and a 15-yard penalty brings it back. But still, the Irish are setting on the Penn State side of the field at the 49 with 6 minutes and 46 seconds to play in the third quarter. The Irish leading 13 to 10. Anthony Johnson and Braxton Banks are in the backfield. Berline gives it to Johnson.
percent of his kicks have been down inside the 20 this year. Ray Ison is the deep man for Penn State. No pressure. Ison, a fair catch call back at the 13, and here's a penalty flag. 32-yard punt. Let's see about the flag.
he also has great feet and outstanding vision. Here's Kovaleski, the linebacker. Gets tangled up with the official there first. And finally avoids the rush and tries to get over to get to Blair Thomas. It looks like uh, when uh, Lawrence came, or Spence came in, hit him down around the knee area, or perhaps the ankle, and that's the trouble right now with Blair Thomas at 3.31 to go. In the third, the seems to be all right. Put that 
knee down. Well, and in a tight fit game like this, too, you're going to moan and complain about every call. Here it is now. The ball is on the ground. Well, now he accepted it with a knee down. Oh, well. It's the 21. First down for the Irish. in front, Jackson shakes one and steps out of bounds up over the 30, about the 31. He's close to a first down. It, interesting call. They put two receivers to the same side, which are called twin receivers, and set up the flanker screen. All of a sudden, Brown comes out, stops, takes the screen, and he's got a blocker in front of him now. The blocker there is Jackson, number six. See him? And anytime you can get Brown one-on-one, -on -one, you're in an ideal situation. So it was an outstanding call by Notre Dame, and they picked up, well, maybe, what, nine and a half. Just, that, just short of a first down. Brown's caught seven balls today for 82 yards. The 97 yard touchdown return on a kickoff because of clipping. This is Braxton Banks carrying, and he has the first down as he crosses the 35. And now Al Trotwick. Keith just checked in with the training staff for Penn State. Blair Thomas seems to be fine, but there could be another problem. Center Keith Radicek, the senior, has really hurt his left foot. Came off the field grimacing. They've got it iced up. I believe someone stepped on it. He's in an awful lot of pain and may not be a factor for a while until that ice takes effect on the foot. In the meantime, I'm noticing an awful lot of petty hitting away from the ball that you may not be seeing. An awful lot of extra punches being thrown. Up to you. On first down, it comes back to Anthony Johnson, who has no place to go and will lose a half a yard. As Don Graham strung him out. Put him down. That's part of the fun of these big games now. That's part of the fun of these big games. You want to get in as many hits as you can. You want to establish territorial rights. Look at this. He's telling that hero back, Tim Brown is 81, that this is my territory. You're going to get that in all big games. That's fun. That's away from the football. You're just trying to establish territorial rights. Ain't much fun when you're the hit either. <laughs> Henderson will come back and get him. Second down, 11. his pass and it is incomplete as Johnson, the intended receiver down in front of Cobbs had slipped and fallen. A lot of the pressure came from the inside and then the backside. Watch this. You see two men come free. One's Shane Conlon 31 back out there. Now here comes big old number 90. That's Giftopoulos the inside linebacker and almost got him. The Burline has really improved his ability to get away from tacklers. He's improved the quickness of his feet and his mobility, and he threw the ball away nicely. And his third down is still about 11. Trying to set up the screen and pressure on him. Number 53, Don Graham, was all over Berline, and he did the smart thing. He threw it where nobody could catch it. And they'll have to punt. Penn State defense now trying to take charge of the ball game. Lions trying to take charge of the line of scrimmage. Ray Isom is deep for Penn State. Along with Jim Coates, they send two back. And Sorensen's two punts today have been 33 and 32. That's a low snap. And whistle before the kick. That's a great play by 53 for Penn State, Don Graham. He stutter stepped a couple of times, threw his arms up like he was going to penetrate and come across the line. And that was just enough to make Notre Dame jump. Reggie Ward was the man called for that illegal procedure. That's your guy right there, Don Graham. Threw his arms up, stutter stepped like he was coming, like the ball had already been snapped. Ward jumped. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Fourth down. Ford don't the kicking game. Don't be all sides. Don't let the ball be blocked. Don't let the ball hit the ground. Don't clip. Good snap this time. Sorensen can't get it to spin for him. And Coach makes the catch. And will be thrown down around the 44-yard line. So it's only a 27-yard punt by Sorensen. And Lou Holtz was moaning about his kicking game yesterday. This is what we have for you. ABC's NFL 
AB is back. Played last week, played well, scored a touchdown. He's fun to watch. Schaefer drops back to throw on first down. Throws again to round three. Again, he's wide open, and the Notre Dame defender, Spence, had fallen down. And round three was wide open. Well, this time, Spence did fall down. He wasn't beaten outright. He just fell when uh, Roundtree made his cut. You'll see him go down. Well, you won't see him go down. Here's Roundtree to the left side of Spence. The ball was there. If Roundtree had to miss that one. Shame on him. So, Schaefer, there he is. Round three, hooking up. And it's first down from the 32. This is Dozier. Big hole over the left side. Cedric Figaro getting his hand on a foot as he went by that kept him from going for more yardage. Boy, Penn State is so methodical, Keith. They just keep coming at you. Well, we've played three quarters, 15 minutes to go. Penn State 17. God has taken control of it. And second down, a yard and a half at the Notre Dame 23. Gives the ball to Dozier. One man misses him. DJ has a first down inside the Notre Dame 15. This is explosion. We told you. Look at him. He comes through. He's just stopping and shopping all the way. Like a whirling dervish. And then once he's hit, he has a lot of power. Brad is at the center right there in the middle of your screen. He's the guy that's been sitting out. But look at him get that block. Just lead the way up the middle. Schaefer throws on first down. Down to the tight end, Cyberly. Inside the 10, they bring him down at the 8. Incidentally, Wally Klein just ran off the field on the previous play, holding his right shoulder. He had had trouble with a dislocation. That'll put Jeff Kuntz into the ball game. At that tackle spot, Kuntz has played very well of late. But they need Klein here, 6'9", 275. The eight, second down and four. Manoa. Manoa to the six. They'll need about a yard and a half for a first down. Third down coming up. First goal line. First goal line. Blair Thomas comes in. The second tight end comes in. It's Pumphrey. line up in the power eye with Dozier and Manoa behind the quarterback and Blair Thomas in that power of blocking position. They give it to Thomas instead and he dives for the first down. So I think everybody reads, including me, Dozier on the play or at least the fullback. Instead they give it to Thomas and he slashes the right side and they've got a first and goal. This is a guy that averages nine yards a carry. He's got good quickness. When you get down close, it's power football. They're in short yardage defense. So if he sees a gap, he's got to lunge forward. He did for the first down. Ball is on the three. Thomas again. About the one. Touchdown here. Mighty big. Oh, 
score points with you, we must choose our communications weapons carefully. That's why we compete with products like PRISM, the ultimate console. Yeah, we found the Disney Lion. couple of times. 
times. He's picked up seven and eight. So the ball is on the nine. It's first and goal, Notre Dame.
new ideas in financial planning that can help pay for the home you live in or build you a vacation home. Today's Equitable, your key to financial opportunity. Our new ideas not only protect you, but can help send your kids to college. Today's Equitable, your key to financial opportunity. Our agents and financial planners can show you new ways to make high returns on your money. We are the your key to financial opportunity. Students are always going places. Now there's a powerful computer that can go with them. The IBM PC Convertible. It goes from chemistry to economics. From ancient civilization... Sweet. And Brown just simply didn't throw the ball over him. Well, they're experienced. They don't leave their position. They don't leave home. They put themselves in a position where they can make big plays. Giftopoulos may have Furline behind him, but he still has five yards. He's only five yards from the play. He never left and never went with the flow of the play. He stayed at home, and he made the play. Jim Coach, Blair Thomas are deep for the kickoff. 24 to 19 ball game, 7-37. Caught by Eric Hamilton. 
lead by 11, 24 to 13. But now the Irish have scored, missed the two-point try. And here we go. 4-19 to play in the game. Undefeated Penn State. They were in a tough one last week. They were in a tough one again this week. They have become a target team. Erline pumps it, goes down the middle. Brown is there, fighting for the ball, incomplete. There was double coverage. And it looked like Berline did not really have control of the ball as he let it fly. It was a Wappler. And there were two Penn Staters there, Marcus Henderson and Ray Isom. He didn't have much time to throw either because he, if he did, he would have looked off Tim Brown and would have hit number 89, Joel Williams, his tight end. Williams was down the right sideline all by himself. And Williams has not seen the ball today. The Irish tight end has not had a ball. Defense does its job. 
again. We see the quickness or the improved quickness of Berline. He's not really that quick, but he has improved what he does have. Gets the ball out on a nice scramble pass to Johnson, who has a nice second effort. To the sideline, very quickly, and a pickup across midfield to the Penn State 49 by Dumas, and he did not get out of bounds. And you see there's less than two minutes to play. And Notre Dame takes one of its timeouts. And then Dumas is hurt. The man who caught the ball, having trouble getting up. So there's timeout for the injured player, stopping the clock at one minute and 56 seconds to play in the game. One of the unbeaten Michigan fell today to Minnesota. Penn State ranked third coming into this ball game. Trying to hold off a fighting Irish with a five-point lead. The offensive team called to the sidelines by Notre Dame as Dumas now has finally turned over. Watch his right leg got tongue. Looked like it got caught up there, the left leg. The potential for a national championship game is at stake here. Penn State. Miami, of course, the matchup everybody's been talking about. Penn State leads. 24 to 19. Notre Dame has the ball, second down at about a foot at the Penn State 49 with 156 to play. Berline on second down, wants to throw, does down the middle. Will Jackson makes the catch, takes a lick from Ray Isom, but holds on and it's first down inside the 35 of Penn State. That's a great decision that time by Perlon. He was watching 81 Tim Brown all the way. When Jackson comes clear right there, he hits him with the football. Ison makes a nice play on it as a defensive safety, but he had already made the catch. From the 34, Perlon on a roll, getting the pressure. Gets his pass off. Pass is good. Caught by Monahan, the fullback. Monahan diving for the marker. Goes out of bounds, stopping the clock at 1.36 to play in the game. Question is, did he get to the marker? I don't think so. He gets to the clock. That's just as important. Stops it at 136. Here it is again. Burline again showing some improved quickness. And gets the ball to Monahan. Monahan gets out of bounds and stops the clock they're going to measure. There was a time when they said when Burline came around that corner, they could get called for delay of game. He was so slow, but he's improved that. He's about a yard short of the first down. That's the first catch of the year by Monahan. First of the year for Tom. Second and one. Erlang's pass underneath. It's caught by Jackson at the 10, at the 6.
contact was made. 52 seconds to play. Third down for the Irish. Penn State trying to stay undefeated. Trying to stay in the hunt for a national championship. Quality 
cars and trucks for 50 years. Available at your Nissan dealer. By Michelob Light, who says you can't have it all. By Cigna, a leader in insurance, health care, employee benefits, and financial services. And by Hayes Microcomputer Products Incorporated. Say yes to the future with Hayes. Penn State, 24. Notre Dame, 19. Stay tuned now for updated scores and highlights of today's action on College Football Scoreboard with Jim Lampley. Travel arrangements paid through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. Nobody knows Hawaii like United. We hope you enjoyed today's ball game. This a presentation of ABC Sports. MacGyver soars where eagles dare. Then, Joe Montana is back. Joe Paterno has taken eight Penn State teams unbeaten into the month of November. Seven of them have made it through unscathed. So far, this one joining that group. Penn State today got the win over Notre Dame. The key sequence in the game came in the second half. First, Notre Dame, trailing 10-6, went ahead on this Burline touchdown pass of 15 yards to Tim Brown, who was brilliant throughout the game and had had a kickoff return for touchdown called back in the first half. But four or five minutes later, John Schaefer went over the top for that touchdown. That capped the Penn State comeback, which had also included a 37-yard touchdown pass to Roundtree. And on the strength of those two second-half touchdowns, the Nittany Lion defeat Notre Dame 24-19 to run their record to 10-0 with only Pitt remaining. Minnesota beat Michigan in.